Welcome to Location, the local news program. I'm Patrick Gallagher. And I'm Melissa Menser, and here's your news now. And these are your top stories in the Loquitur. Bullying has no boundaries and can leave negative effects. One of the most recent ways is cyberbullying. Through the use of technology such as Facebook and other media outlets, cyber bullies are able to harass people with no face-to-face -face contact. One of the recent cases occurred in Upper Darby High School last month. It's time to start the financial aid paperwork for next year and the application process is simpler this year. The Pennsylvania Education Assistant Agency's state grant application can now be accessed directly from the FAFSA website. FAFSA determines student eligibility for federal grants, work study, and other scholarships. The decision to link was made to simplify the financial aid application process for students. Visit pheaa.org for more information. Cabrini students have flown to Guatemala for spring break during the past two years. This year, alumni, faculty, and even relatives can attend along with students. This year's trip is sponsored by the Alumni Office and the group will go to San Lucas Tolman. Ten people will be attending the trip this year. Resident assistants are important to college campuses. A good RA is motivated in academics and in the residential halls. RAs hold good qualities such as willingness to help others enjoy campus life experiences, having good time management skills, and an ability to communicate effectively. There are currently 30 RAs on campus. And those were your top stories in the Loquitur. For more information, pick a copy up around campus or visit theloquitur.com. The Cat Board hosted its annual Wing Bowl last week. Let's check in with Megan to find more about this tasty event. On Wednesday, February 9th, Cabrini's Cat Board hosted their second annual Wing Bowl. The competition consisted of five teams competing for the best sauce. They had 30 minutes to complete their recipes. The teams competed for various prizes and, of course, title for the best wing sauce. Ingredients used were soy sauce, cayenne pepper, and melted butter, among others. While the teams mixed, members of the 2010 orientation group entertained the crowd. <laughs> Several students came to enjoy the event. It was actually pretty good. Uh, we got a lot more people than we thought we were going to. Um, we did get a good turnout last time, and this year got a lot, of, lot, lot better, actually. Let's see what some testers thought. I think the wings were pretty awesome, and Team 3 wings were the best. Team 3 Team Chicken Wing. We even caught up with our own Danielle Alio and Chris Savardi in on the action. When all was said and done, Team We're Back was named the winner for the second year in a row. Uh, this is the uh, second year in a row that we uh, made this sauce. We, uh, we go with a little butter, with a little bit of hot sauce. Everything else we keep uh, secret, so uh, we're coming back next year. I'm Megan Sokolowski on location. Back to you at the news desk. And now let's take a look back in history. Ever wonder how Valentine's Day started? On February 14th, around the year 278 A.D., Valentine, a priest in Rome, was executed by the Emperor Claudius II. Valentine was executed because he was defying Roman law by marrying young lovers in secret after Claudius banned all engagements and marriages. The legend has it that while in jail, Valentine left a note for the jailer's daughter signed, From Your Valentine. On February 16, 1923, English archaeologist Howard Carter entered the tomb of the then unknown King Tutankhamun. King Tut lived around 1400 BC and died when he was still a teenager. The excursion was backed by Lord Carnivon, who wanted to call off the search after five years, but Carter convinced him to give him one more year. In the recent demonstrations in Egypt, the statue of the king is now missing and hoped to be returned. And on February 19, 1847, what was left of the Donner Party was rescued. Fueled by Western fever, 89 people set out to head west on Wagon Trail from Springfield, Illinois. Caught in an early winter storm in October, the party was trapped in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Building makeshift tents and killing their oxen for food, they hoped for an early thaw that never came. Three weeks passed, and in a fight for survival, they had to resort to cannibalism. Of the original 89 members, only 45 reached their destination. 
And that was your look back in history. And now let's take a trip around the world. After 18 days, the protests of Egyptian people had a political effect when the Egyptian president stepped down. The resignation of the president ends a three-decade-long political tyranny in the country. As the announcement was made, the Egyptian people shouted out, God is great. In a recent budget proposal, President Obama said that he can cut the deficit $1.1 trillion over the next 10 years. If this happens, it will be enough to stabilize the nation's fiscal health and allow more time to address other nationwide problems. The majority of the reductions will be taken away from the national spending. And that was your trip around the world. And now let's check in with Liz and our person of the week. Hi everyone, today I have Phil Haggerty, senior history major and star of the upcoming show, Merrily We Roll Along. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. How are you? Great. Now, I was told you have a musical background. You were in a bunch of shows when you were younger. Could you tell us about that, how you got involved, what inspired you to be in it? Um, I was in my first show in sixth grade, and that was kind of just as a lark, and I kind of just did it. Um, but then I didn't really return to it. Uh, I was inspired because my brother was in a show, and I saw it in eighth grade accidentally. Just I had nothing to do that night, so I wanted to go see it. and then. That spawned me doing around 12 or 13 more shows in high school alone. So I was always active with it, and then I came back to it in Cabrini. Were you always the lead in these shows, or what were, what were your roles? Uh, I didn't get my first lead until my sophomore year of high school, but uh, I, I was in the chorus numbers and stuff like that, but also as I progressed in high school, uh, the leads started to come more and more, but not, it wasn't always a guaranteed thing. Okay, now this is the last show that you'll be involved in. Can, mm -hmm. You're a senior, you'll be graduating soon. Could you tell us a little bit about your character, what we should expect from the show, as brief, as much as you can? Mm -hmm. We didn't want to give it uh, away. Merrily We Roll Along is a story told in reverse, uh, so every scene is before the scene before it. And if that's not confusing to you, then you are smarter than I am. But the concept of it is how one's decisions will affect your life and how you can, I guess, somehow avoid it in the back. And I play a man named Charlie, and he's a he's a lyricist and a fabulous writer. Um, but he does not take to success as well as his writing partner does, and that causes him to be stubborn and tensions arise, things like that. Oh, that sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you find time to balance it all? The play, the schoolwork. You know, you're going into the real world soon. How mm -hmm. do you find time to just you know, kick back and relax and not stress. Yeah, well, uh, history is, is great. I mean, like, it's not such an active thing like math, like doing it constantly. It's more about reading. And I find time to read between being at home and being here. I mean, it's just about kind of finding your, your rhythm with it. And practice is usually five times a week. So the, the balance usually comes to reading at night before I go to bed for an hour or two. Um, papers just the same. It's it's, I I find a pretty natural rhythm to the way that I do things. But uh, the real world too, can be a little daunting to some people. Uh, I I'm not I'm not feeling the whole stress. Maybe it's just that I'm not hitting that wall yet because of senioritis or something like that. But um, you know, I, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen to all of us. So mm. I'm looking forward to it. It's not scary. Well, that's good that you're not scared. <laughs> now, this past fall semester, you were crowned Mr. Cabrini with our producer, Danielle Alio, which was, I was there, and it was phenomenal, and mm -hmm. I loved every second of it. Um, I know that it was only for one night, and but you guys had to come up with a talent. You had to talk and answer questions. You had mm -hmm. a lot to prepare for. Was that, do you think you were under more stress doing that at, versus the play because it was in such a short span of time you had to figure everything out? Yeah, I mean, I think someone could see it as like more stress. I saw it as I'm just not going to have enough time to think about it. So I did what was natural. The most stressful thing to me was finding the kind of the outfit that I wanted to do, which was hideous. And I wanted to make that like kind of the staple of it. And also, I mean, I already had known the song and everyone knows the song from watching French, Fresh Prince and things like that. But, um, and the questions, I, I feel natural, you know? So it wasn't stressful in the sense that I was worried about what was going to be asked. It was more stressful in the sense that I didn't have a lot of time to think about it. 
Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Now, um, any final thoughts? Anything that you would like to share with us that you hope to see, to, um, see happen in the future? Anything you hope to accomplish? Uh, I don't know. Life is certainly going to be interesting. I, I haven't exactly nailed down what next year holds for me. And that could be continuing with history. That could be continuing uh, schooling in something, uh, some form like that. And I haven't exactly ruled out acting or, or going to New York or something like that. I, I, I feel like I'm a sophomore when I actually should realize that I'm a senior. So uh, next year is going to be as interesting as these, this year has been, too. Oh. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was wonderful having you. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for watching, guys. Now back to Pat and Alyssa at the news desk. Now I'll stick with Allie for sports. It was senior night. Did you get out there, Allie? I did. It was a little sad saying goodbye to all the seniors, but they were both really good games. This Monday, the men and women's basketball teams played Baptist Bible College for their senior night games. Senior Julie Bonomo was honored before the women's game for her four years as part of the team, and seniors Don Ferrello and Lamar Fisher were honored before the men's game for their four-year tenure. In the women's game, freshman Brittany Sandone led the Lady Cavs with 14 points, and freshman Annie Rivetuso notched her second double-double of the season, scoring 12 points and collecting 10 rebounds. Ultimately, the Lady Cavs could not finish above the defenders and lost with a final score of 57-52. to In the men's game, sophomore Corey Lemons netted a team-high 30 points, while senior Dom Ferrello grabbed his sixth double-double of the season with 20 points and 12 rebounds. The Cavaliers finished off the defenders with a final score of 95-81. to Both the women and men are set to take on the Newman Knights on Thursday night in a doubleheader at Newman University. The women's game is set to begin at 6 p.m. with the men's following immediately after. The time that all Philly fans have been waiting for has finally arrived, the beginning of spring training. Pitchers and catchers took the field for the first time on Monday, February 14th in Clearwater, Florida. Let's check in with Greg Stevens to see what Cabrini students are most looking forward to this season. Uh, I'm looking for, you know, to see how our four aces get together and, you know, see what kind of season they can have. Hopefully they all can reach 20 games, uh, win 20 games this year, and also looking forward to how our hitting comes along. Hopefully that can be a little bit better this season. I'm, getting, I'm looking forward to getting back to the stadium and having a good time there. The pitching matchups between Cliff Lee and Roy Halliday. Uh, mostly it's Cliff Lee. Uh, coming back to the Phillies, but I want to see how the offense is going to do without Jason Worth on their on their line behind Ryan Howard. All right, what I'm looking forward to most about the Phillies uh, season coming up is uh, start rotation. We'll see if it holds up to the hype that it's surrounded by. Uh, see if these guys can go out and produce the wins that they need to put the uh, Phillies back in the postseason. I'm looking forward to Cliffley coming back and getting to wear the shirt I got when he was still on the team, and then. He left the team, and now he's back so I could wear it. Thanks, Greg. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Be sure to tune in next week for more sports coverage. Thanks, Allie. Now let's check in with Danielle for your red carpet rants. Hey, guys. Danielle here with your entertainment news. As Valentine's Day comes to an end, Cabrini College student and student government president John Solon reminds us that there's still hope to find a Valentine even when the holiday is over. Let's take a look. Since Valentine's Day didn't work out this year, I'm on the prowl, okay? I'm on the course, I'm ready to hit some balls. Let's go do it. Hey girl, I heard milk's good for your body, but damn, how much do you drink? Let me ask you, do you, do you know where I am? <laughs> I thought I was lost because I thought I was in paradise. <laughs> I happen to hate Valentine's Day. I think it's the worst day of the year, and here's why. When I was a freshman here, I cheated on my girlfriend every weekend. Hey, what's going on? Hey, let me ask you, do you use Windex on your pants? Oh, that's too bad, because I could see myself there. Hey, excuse me. If I could rearrange the alphabet, I'll put you and I together. Valentine's Day comes around. I spend $90 on roses, only to get dumped two hours later. You know what $90 is? That's a lot of money. That's four cases of beer in some places. Dr. Mace, Dr. Mace, there's been a robbery. Someone stole my heart. And I think she's in this room. She's right there. Do you know how much a polar bear weighs? 
Well, it's enough to break the ice. I'm not having the greatest luck right now. I think I just gotta regroup, refocus, recharge my batteries, and try something new, okay? Tiger Woods didn't do it alone. Michael Jordan didn't do it without a coach. I just need a caddy right now, okay? And the caddy's me. I'm the same, I'm one and one. That's me. Do you have a Band-Aid? I fell and hurt my knee when I saw you. I think I fell in love. Humana, 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 humana. Now, I was just gonna ask you if you uh, use Windex on your pants. No, I'm in well, decked out in Cabrini gear right now. Uh, hey girl, um, do you use Windex on those things? She clearly wanted me. Hey girl, you know what Winx makes love like a tiger? All right, well, I'll get you guys later. It's time to regroup, it's time to go home, recharge my batteries, use some maple syrup, brush my teeth, and go to bed, okay? I see new energy, um, I need to refocus, come up with new lines, and we'll come back stronger next week, okay? Um, you get us next time on Walking with John after Valentine's Day. Besides Valentine's Day, this week was also filled with talk of the Grammys. Among the mentionable are Lady Gaga for sitting in an egg-shaped incubator. The only problem I had with her performance was the fact that the egg didn't hatch. I was anticipating a spectacular entrance and was left a little disappointed. However, Rihanna and Drake's performance did not disappoint. Between Rihanna shaking her sparkly groin all over the stage and Drake bumping and grinding the air, it got a little steamy at the Grammys. The Grammys also disappointed thousands, maybe millions of Justin Bieber fans when he didn't take home the award for Best New Artist. Stay strong, believers. Your day will come. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for more entertainment news. I'm Danielle McLaughlin. Back to the news desk. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's go to Ian with Just a Thought. Hey, it's Ian with Just a Thought. Over the past week, I've seen enough Justin Bieber. Yes, I've seen his face. And no, I'm not a believer. He was on a Super Bowl commercial. He was at the Grammys. And now he has a movie out. This kid is 16 and already has a movie about his rise to stardom like he's president or somebody important. Keep in mind they're still working on biopics about Freddie Mercury and Frank Sinatra. This, the title of this film is called Never Say Never. No, I'd like to say never. I'll never understand why this kid incites the mob mentality with preteen girls. I'll never understand why people like his music. I'll never understand why he's jamming with Usher and Ludacris. I mean, nobody cares about Ludacris anyways, but still, I'll never understand why I like his music. Never say never. Thanks, Ian. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Be sure to check us out at thelocator.com and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Melissa Menser. And I'm Patrick Gallagher. Enjoy the great weather this week in Cabrini.